Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at When We Feel Like It O'Clock. And look at the entourage we have today. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, as you know, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, as you know. The whole land knows that by now, unless you have the corona or something last little while. <laughs> but we have some fine participants in this uh, conversation today. I've, we've, uh, Deli and I have did uh, some, uh, did one already before. You can go check that out. It's some fantastic content. One of the finest writers I've ever heard. Great hockey mind. Thank you. Uh, Joe Joe Boric as well, fantastic. Uh, also, we you've seen a couple that we've done together. You know his great hockey mind. Deli, what do you got going on right now in your life? Uh, you know, it's pretty slow now. California's back up to uh, like record numbers of COVID-19. So uh, high school sports are being pushed back. Um, so there isn't much. Basically, being a dad and writing the occasional Ducks article, uh, I know they re-signed Troy Terry the other day, so we can we can talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah, it's been slow going here. I'm excited for hockey to get back, though. Can't wait. Oh, awesome! And doing these fine, this fine programming, of course. Absolutely, Joe, yeah. doing Joe, this. Joe, how about you, my friend? I know you're I, a busy guy. Yeah, I've been really well. I've been well. I mean, we've had uh, we've still been taking it easy here. Um, PA, we've been doing pretty good. They've been doing pretty good. Our government managing the stuff. Um, compared to uh, some of our other locales so we've been doing fairly well here i've just been doing stuff for as you know flyers nitty gritty with jamie basket that's mostly what i do and then pub sports i write baseball stuff those are my two uh main mm -hmm. things and then you've appeared on my podcast the true philadelphians but um hockey's huge hockey's right around the corner it's back uh, we have playoff hockey in the summer like they said on our scrimmage today I don't think anyone thinks it's the summer. That's a big hockey person. Like you just you're kind of stuck in like a time warp where you're just like, oh, hockey season started. Oh, right. That's right. It's July. Um, and you're like almost forgetting that sometime. But that's just so exciting how uh, Anthony uh, Odelli said they had a great signing. The Flyers also had a great signing over here. Uh, they signed Limblum for three years after recovering. A great story continues to a three-year, $9 million contract. So two great signings for two great teams there. So, Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be going on a hiking excursion for the next three days. And I told my wife, pretty much forget that I exist for the next two months <laughs> after that. Hockey's back. I don't, I don't think anybody cares in this summer at all. Some interesting things about that is some little bit of summer news that would normally be summer news and not uh, – kind of clouded by the playoffs mm -hmm. is that Seattle looks like they're going to be putting their name out there today in the next little bit. And um, so I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about that. I'm, I, I, a lot of people don't like my, I, I like the sock guys. I, I think, or like some sort of a ship, like a uh, ship name or something like that. Um, but the, the popular thing right now seems to be the Kraken. Am I right? Yeah, I think you're. I think you are right. Uh, I that was my vote. I just love the idea, uh, kind of the in arena entertainment they can provide with that. Uh, the whole release the Kraken from that like Gods of of Ancient Greece or whatever movie that came out back way back. I think it was like Sam Worthington in that movie or something. But uh, I like that right before a power play. I just think it's a cool kind of mascot with the octopus. I think Kraken is kind of an octopusy type. Uh, type creature so it's it's a i think it's a relatively cool and unique um uh, mascot you did mention uh one of the drawbacks though which i'll let you talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll yeah that's uh seattle's kind of known for the drugs and stuff like that same as vancouver <laughs> crack yeah I see all the crack reference like I, I don't want to listen to all the freaking cheesy, some of the cheesy writers out there that'll use that reference. <laughs> oh, Seattle's on crack tonight, too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. That's my only real downfall on it. Honestly, like for the reasons you said, though, I think it's actually kind of a cool idea. How about you, Joe? What do you think? I think I saw when I went on earlier, they had the two, somebody put jersey designs out and they put one for the crack and, and then they put one for the uh, sock eyes because that was like the two main one that people thought going in three hours ago. And both of them look kind of cool, but I did really like how Deli was getting at how the Kraken's like an octopus creature. So it like comes out, it looks a lot cooler. Um, 
And uh, obviously, we've been waiting a long while for this. I also read a tweet that said the number of days between the NHL expansion announcement and team's name logo reveal was 153 for Vegas. For Seattle, it was 597. <laughs> so we've been waiting a very long time for the name reveal of the Seattle Hockey Club, and it's going to be very exciting to see. I would lean towards probably thinking it's the Kraken because I brought up the uh, – polling before this where their fans and we were talking before this voted that they like the idea of a mythical creature 31 percent voted that they prefer that in a name and then 35 percent said that something that can swim with the second highest being um something that you fear and then that can fly so i'm pretty sure a kraken can do all of those things so that would uh fit the fans polling as well that's why i would say it would probably be the kraken yeah it certainly looks like it's heading that direction. I mean, I, I wouldn't be against the Sockeyes, and I was actually going over some of the names. It, it's surprisingly hard to come up with a, I think, an appropriate uh, name for Seattle, given all the all the professional sports teams we have in America. Like, there's so many things you could go back and try to do. I believe weren't weren't there wasn't the Seattle franchise one of the earliest American teams to win the Stanley Cup, or uh, yeah. and they're at the time called the Metropolitans, I believe. I think that's yeah. what and but. And so I thought, like, oh, it'd be cool to be the Seattle Metropolitans. But then I was like, wait, you can't. They already have the New York Metropolitans in baseball. Right. So yeah. um, it's it's and it's kind of a surprisingly difficult field to navigate. So I think the Kraken or the Sockeyes also would be a pretty would be pretty, pretty great mascot. The other one I was thinking of, but then I heard they might try to bring back uh, the an NBA team eventually, is if they wanted to take something from they used to have the Supersonic. So they could have done like Sonic Force or like Sonic Boom or like something with the Sonic name. But since the Supersonics are rumored to probably potentially they might maybe not the Supersonics, but they might have another basketball team. I wouldn't play off of that because they might want to play off of that. So that's probably why they decided not to go there. Yeah, I wonder if anybody in Seattle owns still owns the copyright for anything Sonics related. That's true. Um, that's a good point. But yeah. Anyways, it's going to be, it's, it's kind of fun. And I, I'm, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the name will be. Uh, I'm, I'm actually more interested in when we'll have to do this together, talking about what their team's going to look like, but uh, we'll do that again some, sometime down the road here for sure. So the next thing I was going to get into was uh, something we've been talking a lot of playoffs, but I personally have not did any videos on who we think is going to win the Stanley Cup, or you know, has the high, what would give you be your highest odds to win the Stanley Cup this year with all this stuff that's going on? There's a whole bunch of factors involved this year that isn't normally in, uh, of course, with COVID and no my, no fans and all that stuff like that in play. That can all have effect on what maybe our decision would be. Um, you could, I think, we're, maybe give us a West and an East, and who do you think would likely win? Out of uh, out of both of those, or who who do you think has the best possibility and why? Let's start off with Joe. What do you what do you figure, Joe? Um, well, out in the East, I think. I mean, mm. I'm not going to pick the top team because the top team's having so much going wrong for them right now. The Bruins have so much guys out uh, for the unfit to play tag. Some of them they said won't be able to play until Toronto and practice again. So. Their team dynamics are, of course, a little bit thrown off um, with Boston going into the round robin. And then hopefully they hope they can supplant it in the round robin and then be set for going into the playoff. Um, my team, other than, um, of course, I think us, the Flyers, have a pretty good chance of contending for it. But I'm not going to be too homer. I'll pick a different team. Uh, I think my team would actually be because they're going to be ticked from last year. Uh I think Tampa's probably going to come into this playoffs pretty pissed off from last season, and they don't have all the uh, adversities going on, as, as uh, even though they're in Florida, so it's a little surprising, but they don't have as much going on as the Bruins are right now, and they have Vasilevsky, who of course is a beast of a goalie up for the Vezina. They have a uh, good young defense. Yes, they have to figure out how to sign Sergachev. That's going to be a big issue for them, but right now they have him on their team. So... They have some of the be probably the best offensive depth in hockey, I would say, because your third line is could be some team's first line if they really felt like it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a team that I would pick in the East. The West is hard as heck because um, you got the uh, 
you got the Blues, who just won the Cup, had another fantastic season this year. And the big thing that a lot of people don't look at for the Blues is how good of a backup Jake Allen was this year. Uh, Jake Allen actually had a resurgence this year and played really well behind Bennington. So that obviously, I would think, helps the Blues even further um, having a goalie to fall back on if all else happens. Obviously, you don't want Jordan Bennington to go down, but just in case that happens. Where Colorado, I love them, but my concern is Ruby's not as proven in the playoffs, and Pavel Francois just emerged as a 29-year-old. So, I, I mean, yeah, I haven't seen it fully yet. I love what I've seen from him as a goalie emerging this year. But we know sometimes once those goalies that emerge in the first year hit the playoffs, they kind of hit a wall. And then after that season, once they get back into the playoffs, that's when they go, OK, now I got it because I figured it out from that first playoff run. That's what would worry about me picking Colorado. So I, I actually think the Blues might have the best chance with this layoff too, being able to reestablish themselves of actually being a team to go back, to, maybe not win, but go to the cup back-to-back years my other team would have to be Vegas if I picked anybody because goaltending you know I'm a goaltending guy uh Flurry will step up and uh if he wants to um if they want to go with him I mean and then if not Robin Leonard looked like a Vezina candidate in three games with you put him in for three games he had like a low two something goals against average before the season halted and so I think uh he's a guy I know we talked about them in our last video that would be my team in the west because they're just too hard to Pega uh, one. My two in the East would have been Boston. Uh, would have been Philly. It would be Philly and Boston, but I made it Philly and Tampa because Boston has all the uncertainty, so I can't pick them. Yeah, and I, I, I think they're pretty. I mean, those are pretty strong choices for me. It's so hard to to handicap this because it's just it's such an unknown. But I, I tried to kind of do it more who I thought would thrive in this kind of environment. And I'll start with the West because I think the Blues of all the teams, I think are the most well-suited to get right back into things. They aren't necessarily, I mean, they've got a lot of skilled players and a lot of depth, but their game is, I mean, having watched the Stanley Cup finals last year and, and paid, co paid such close attention, they're so physical. And physicality to me feels like a, a type of game that's much easier to hop back into than the actual high, highly skilled teams that you have. Um, Getting back on the same page on the power play for teams like, I mean, I know we're talking Eastern Conference with Tampa, but guys, teams that have strong power plays, highly skilled top end players, it takes a little while to get back on the same page in terms of chemistry. And I think that's why you see some of them have slower starts ordinarily anyway. So I think the Blues are better suited to get started quickly and, and that depth will help them if they have any sort of injury or sickness coming into, coming into play. The Eastern Conference to me, is, is I, <laughs> I find it a little bit harder because you never know. The Bruins, obviously, like you mentioned, Joe, are getting destroyed by injuries and, and unfit to play tags and, I guess, irresponsibility between Pasternak and Kasha. Uh, Tampa is one of those skilled teams that I, I just I see and I look at just like last year and I think, I mean, uh, where are you going to be when the, when the bodies are really flying and, and teams bring the physicality? So I, I'm not sure about Tampa. I, I think, surprisingly, the team that might come out of the East is, is Pittsburgh. Uh, I know they're one of the bottom four or bottom teams. They have to get through the early round robin against Montreal. But I just like their, I like their experience level. I think that they were kind of the closest in that, in that. They were kind of bunched closer. They were, what, three points behind Philly for that fourth spot? Um, so they're kind of in that upper tier anyway. Getting to play a team like Montreal in the first round, as long as Carey Price doesn't steal the uh, steal the series, is is an advantage because Montreal has no business being in the in the in the playoffs. I know what the situation is. <laughs> so I think uh, I really do think that that Pittsburgh could come out of the East. Uh, I just think their experience level. The one obviously the one downside for them is. I don't necessarily know if there's as, as deep as some of the other teams. And you were mentioning one guy comes down with a with an illness, or a couple guys are exposed uh, and have to quarantine, and all of a sudden, I mean, you're pretty much <laughs> running on one leg if you're if you if one of those players is Crosby or Malkin uh, or or Latang. So um, I really think I think I like Pittsburgh's experience. I like their. Uh, I like kind of where they were just to end the season, but I, I think I think they'd be a, a surprise. But um, I, I mean, maybe not so much of a surprise, but <laughs> uh, make some noise and uh, yeah. So and then Philadelphia as well. Philadelphia's had a very strong team. I think Philly can definitely uh, 
has the combination of skill and physicality to, to get out of a, out of a weird kind of playoff format. Yeah, I was going to say with Pittsburgh, though, you make a great point with that um, because Gensel is another guy that w- wouldn't have been in yes. if um, we had the normal postseason and now is supposed to be. That's a huge uh, addition to have. And then Crosby, of course, the question marks are lifted on him because he was back on the ice with Pittsburgh. Um, tweet that reminisced. I forget what movie that's from, but it's like, he's back on the ice, he's back on the ice, he's back. like where they're just going nuts and stuff. Um, so uh, yeah. he he was all back and set and raring to go. Um, so yeah, they're, them, they would be the probably other team I would pick with us and Tampa, but you make a good point with Tampa, their skill, it's just eventually I feel like they have too much skill and they're going to have to win. It's just also Stamkos with Tampa uh, is going to be a... Uh, bugaboo there which when steven stamkos is at full if he won't well, one if he's at full percentage and uh two if he's able to play right away and when he's going to play so that's a that's an effect that i actually forgot until right now uh on tampa as well so um a, a surprise team though if we want to give a surprise team for the east just because i never want to count this coach out would probably be the hurricanes because it's Rob Brindamore. Rob Brindamore just be like, yeah, you know what? Peter Morazic all of a sudden is now great again. And you're like, okay, cool. He went from being a decent goaltender to now all of a sudden looking like a Vezina contender for two months again. I don't know how you do this, Rod Brindamore, but more power to you. Um, <laughs> so, like, uh, that's that's why I would throw them in a surprise because they're like one of those teams that you just never want to count out. If you bet against them, normally you look like an idiot. So it's like it's like one of those uh, teams that if I had to pick a surprise, they would be the one in the East. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm actually – having a hard time going against my gut here uh i have i have battles with my gut in my head all the time. i'm interested to see what your gut is then compared to your head <laughs> my gut says that uh especially in the east it's going to be a team that is playing in the preliminary round uh i think motivation in that uh our, our sorry momentum in that Uh, conference is going to be absolutely huge, Um, except for Philadelphia. I just have a feeling AV can get that Philadelphia team. And yes, I am a Philadelphia fan in the East, but uh, I also am a handicapper. So that takes, goes right over my, like that takes over my, my loyalty most of the time, almost all the time. Um, except for Philadelphia. Philadelphia is, a t- is the one team that I think can be prepared well enough to be able to beat another a team that's coming in with momentum, mostly because I have a huge, I'm a huge believer in Carter Hart. I just think Carter Hart is that, that uh, is the X factor that can push them to the finals. I, I'm taking Philadelphia this year. I, I've, I've thought about it a long time. My surprise team, as you know, is Columbus. I do believe Columbus will beat Toronto. I, I like the what you're I, I agree, uh, what you're saying, uh, Delhi, about uh, Pittsburgh makes a lot of sense too, and now has my mind percolating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just saying, well. Pirlo, uh, to back up your thing for the Flyers, though, we got a lot of um, quotes and stuff from the team uh, reporting on them. Brian Elliott also, um, for a fallback, has looked basically now fully healthy almost uh our reporters have said in camp to how he looked in his st louis days so he's looked the best he's looked in a while so that's a uh positive going into this season especially if you don't want to start carter hart for the exhibition and maybe the first round robin since he's coming off back spasms so and it's the depth philadelphia yeah. has more depth than just about every team out there i am with you on that deli with Tampa. I need to see a playoff type performance first. I do appreciate what uh, Cooper did changing that system around early and coming with a more uh, balanced approach. Uh, But I want to see it first. Uh, I don't see the, and the same reason why I don't like Toronto over Columbus. I think Toronto's defense is going to get pummeled. And even in a five game series, I just, I, I just don't see Barry uh being a factor honestly really quick 
and uh, other and there's nobody else on that defense that's going to be able to have any pushback as far as I can see. But in the West, the one I'm scared of most, and I just have a feeling about, is the Edmonton Oilers. I think if that Chicago series is going to be huge, the momentum they're taking out of that series and going into the next round, if they don't play St. Louis in the second round, and for the all that's the reasons, what I was going to ask. Yeah. For all the reasons you just said, St. Louis is the other team that I think that are not going to be gaining momentum like that, that has the type of game that can beat you anyway. You know what I mean? Like that physical grinding, slow you down type game. They can take the momentum away from a team really quick. And I, uh, so, and I, Colorado, I won't, I've been saying Colorado all year, but not just for the goaltending. I just think they're not, they're a little too green yet. Just a little too green. Imagine though, that team has cap space coming out of the yin yeah. next year. <laughs> That team is going to be insane next year. It wouldn't surprise me if they won this year, but after lots of thought about it, I'm I'm going away from that. Mm-hmm. So I got to pick one, and um, I'm going to say I'm going to say the Edmonton Oilers, Edmonton Oilers, Philadelphia Flyers. I wanted to leave that for and you that, because I I'm know gonna, you're I'm yeah, put a an Oilers on guy. That, <laughs> if they play St. Louis in the second round, I'm I'm very concerned. I'm very yeah, concerned. I, I I like Edmonton a lot too. I just couldn't take that from you because you're a <laughs> you're an Edmonton guy. I didn't want I didn't want to bring up Edmonton too. I went on a little bit of a ranch. I was like, let me let Pirlo have the. And compliments the bad to thing about it, Edmonton. my two favorite teams are Philadelphia and Edmonton. And I say a bad thing because it sounds like I'm being a homer, but anybody that watches my stuff knows that I'm definitely not that. It's just those two teams have – the thing is, the problem I have with Edmonton is that forward depth uh, has mm-hmm. concern. And if they play a team like St. Louis, I could see St. Louis's bottom lines beating them. But honestly, I don't see that any other team in the West being able to fight that. Um, go ahead. Well, you mentioned it. I mean, mentioning the Oilers and and when I mentioned the Penguins, that also brings up another kind of factor that I wonder if it'll if if it'll come in, and that is the teams that have first round matchups where they're actually fighting for their lives versus a team that is that's fighting for a tournament seat. Because those teams are, I mean, you're in a weird situation already. You're you're in a neutral site. You're in a bubble. So I can see it getting really weird for the top four teams in each conference trying to, or the, the top, uh, yeah, top four teams in each conference trying to battle out for seeding um, versus a team that just gets thrown into the fire and has to, has to fight for their lives. They're going to be, I, I mean, I would think a little more battle tested coming into the second round. So I, I think that's where teams like Edmonton and Pittsburgh maybe have a little mm-hmm. bit more of an advantage because they have to find that competitive edge early. They don't really have a second life that they can fall back on. So um that's another, I think, a reason that Edmonton definitely could could make some noise as well. Yeah, yeah. you you you've got my mind going about Pittsburgh. I don't know why. I mean, we're talking. <laughs> how many times have I undervalued Sidney Crosby's effect on a, a team? Well, Crosby, team yeah, Crosby's interesting this year because um, when I uh, did for one of the hockey sites, I um, right for the pub sports, I did a top five centers coming into the playoff. Sid, because of his stats coming off a of core muscle surgery and due to the how well O'Reilly and others have done, I actually ranked sixth because he wasn't looking good on both ends because that's just natural. If you're coming off of that surgery, you got to kind of pick one because you're not going to be your normal self on both ends right away. But because of the layoff, um, that helps him immensely coming off of a surgery like that. He might be able to look like the average defender, at least. Sometimes he looks above average when he really steps up in the postseason on the defensive end as well as being that top-notch offensive player, which would then put him in your top five in the playoffs because I went with, like, people will always think that Edmonton's my second team because of how I rank people, but I went with McDavid, Dreisaitl, Matthews, um, Berge, and then uh, Ryan O'Reilly. And then Sid, and then Coots right. was the, so. That's the interesting factor with Crosby. Is he going to be fully? We know he was out. Maybe he was out because of that. Maybe 
maybe that's why he missed a couple of days. They never said, I think it was virus related when he was back. So maybe it was still some soreness from that. So if he's a hundred percent, then Pittsburgh really is able to ascend and soar. Mm-hmm. If Crosby's still feeling the core muscle mm-hmm. a little bit, I think that'll hold them back a tad. Granted, they have Gensel coming back with uh, Malkin, so it's still not going to hinder them. It'll just hold them back a tad. By the way, if anybody can look, oh, I can look it up right now. The Seattle name's been released. Uh, it has. Uh, Kraken. It is a Kraken. Okay, we yes. thought we yeah. were all pretty. Yeah. It's one of the worst kept secrets, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I also, have, yeah. also, Dougie Hamilton stuff coming up that he's injured. Uh, yeah. They can't talk about it, but yeah. That would not be good for Carolina. Uh, yeah, yeah, they just changed <laughs> no. it to the Seattle Kraken. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. No, that would be that would be. Then they're not winning. Uh, they're they're not they're not my sleeper team if Dougie Hamilton's injured. That's not happening. I like Jacob Slavin, but I'm taking them out of my sleeper team if Dougie Hamilton. <laughs> That's a Norris Trophy candidate. That if he didn't get injured this year, would have been in the Norris Trophy candidate, and you're not able to lose that again from your line. Again with Pittsburgh, I just realized that I. I need to see it from Murray. If Murray can play like that, if he can get his confidence back or whatever it is, that that guy's got all the tools. Period. Simple as that. What do you think about Yard? He's already won a cup. So what's that? What's your opinion on Tristan though? Because he stepped in and played very well at I want to say twenty three. His numbers were fantastic, but are you going to put money on a kid that's never been in the playoffs before? I mean, no, I mean, no, that's why I didn't pick Colorado either. But um, because they probably would lean Francois with how dominant he's been. Ruby has experience, but if you're leaning how dominant your guy's been, he doesn't have playoff experience. If Francois plays the way he did going into the break, though, I think oh, Colorado yeah. would definitely <laughs> win that for sure. That's an if, though, because them. like I said, sometimes those goalies first year, that's an if with Koskinen a bit, too with lack of playoff experience, sometimes you have to get that first year or so or two, and then you're like, oh, okay, now I really got it. Now I can hone it in and figure out how to balance the playoffs with the regular season and really hit it in the playoff. And then you have other guys like Carey Price and such that just come in and decide that they're the best things since sliced mm-hmm. bread. So uh, <laughs> it, it, depends, uh, it depends on the mm-hmm. scenario. But um, that's kind of what, I, what would uh, hinder me from picking – um, a team like Colorado. And then Pittsburgh's interesting, though, because I really do like Tristan Yari, and complimenting Pittsburgh pains me as a uh, <laughs> Flyers fan. But uh, Tristan Yari is uh, a guy that I've always liked, and you know I'm a goalie guy, I believe. I'm trying to see. I think he was 23 this year. Uh, 25, okay, even better. So he's even in more of his prime year. So he uh, – and he was, uh, and he had above a 920. And now, you know, people normally we say 915 and above now is great for your save percentage because it kind of went down a bit. Nine, whenever you're above a 920, that's fantastic nowadays. So uh, he had a great year. I think um, he might be able to step up, but I agree with Pierlo. You're going to need Matt Murray to probably come in at some point because once you get in later rounds, the pressure might get to the kid a little bit. So you obviously believe in him. De- you believe in him, Uh Murray. I I I just like the combination of Murray and Yari. Um, I think I think between the two of them, they'll find something that works. Uh, and I, again, it's <laughs> I'm more just like thinking about this weird world we live in, and and who kind of falls back and and has the best stopgap measure. And I know goalies are huge in the playoffs, but I think Crosby and Malkin, and like you mentioned, Joe Gensel. Uh, they're going to be in this situation as important as as Murray or, or Yari playing uh, playing well. So I, I, that's why I kind of chose Pittsburgh. But on another note, similar note, how weird would it be for you, Joe, if, if Pittsburgh? Because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Right, the top four seeds, the top four teams after the round robin tournament are seeded according to who wins. Right, so Philly and Pittsburgh could could meet in the second round. How weird would that be uh, to have two teams with such a hated? Uh, I hate such a hated rivalry playing in rinks with no fans. Like, yeah, I'm sure it would get chippy. It would just be. It, 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 I'm just trying to imagine what this playoff is going to look yeah. like in terms of aesthetically, and it's going to be so weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why they had to put it. That series is a prime example of why they have to put in the three second delay. Yeah. If you didn't put a three second TV delay in with that series, you would be getting sued out of you the you know what. <laughs> um, because every other word in that series would probably be something that the FEC is not too fond of. Um, 
But, yeah, I think that would be a great series. It will be very odd because, like we said, if you go back to flashback to 2012, there were fights just after someone scored a goal. It was like, oh, you scored a goal? Screw you. And then you started fight like, like, it was just, like, that's how it was at that playoff series. So, like, those are so animated. It, it would be, it's going to be really odd not having the fan base. But I do think, like they said, the three-second delays so you can hear a lot more of the rink and the audio stuff that you're able to hear and interact with. So I think it's going to be cool listening to some of the stuff you're actually and hearing some of the ambiances and sounds of the game you're not normally uh, able to hear. So that's a little bit what I'm looking forward to this year um, on a positive note because – and then I think some stadium – I think they were talking about – I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but having fan, like the fathead type things in the arenas like baseball's doing because all NHL has to do is cover two stadiums, not the whole shebang. So Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, yeah, no, that it's smart. Sorry. Yeah. Pearl, yeah. go ahead. Oh, uh, um, I think with that, they're probably going to have virtual fans. I, I just think that mm-hmm. that's likely going to be the case. It's probably what nope. I think that baseball's saying they're doing that as well. They're going to have virtual fans, and just to give the the listener on television a a natural feeling of watching the game. Uh, I know WWF or WWE did it without any canned fans or anything like that. And, and I don't watch it, but I did watch some of it and it was really weird. And I think it's going to be really weird with hockey as well. I think they'll do something. I mean, just to have some sort of noise. Yeah. Uh, now you make background. crowd noise, right? <laughs> like you make yeah. crowd noise by that, right? Not like, because by uh, virtual fans, that could also mean, fans stream in via the big screen. I don't know if you meant that or you meant crowd noise. Yeah. I think they're doing, I think they, I think they recorded videos. I read online. They were, they had uh, like some teams had season ticket holders pre-record like chants and cheers. Oh, that's awesome. So I think they're going to do that. Oh, <clears throat> that's, that, that's actually really cool. I didn't even see that. That's actually that's a great awesome. idea. Because wow. I know with baseball, they were talking about and hockey, they could make a loads of money on this because it's the playoffs potentially somebody brought up the idea of using all the stadium boards or cameras, how you could have people streaming through Skype or Zoom or or whatever, and then you would be watching the game and there would be all the cheers because whenever something happens, everybody would cheer through the platform. Um, Obviously, if the NHL wanted to do that, they could probably make bank because you would be streaming into a playoff game. So um, that could be, but I don't think they'll do that now because that's coming way too close. They would have to figure that out in a matter of like seven days. So. All yeah. right. Well, so we've got Pittsburgh. Uh, I forgot already. Pittsburgh, St. Louis. You're saying possi- t- yeah, possibility of Tampa. Or and- Philly. I would say Tampa, Philly in the east. In the west, I had St. Louis or Vegas. Because they're goaltending. If Vegas' is defense flounders, I think one of Flurry or Leonard is just going to say, nope, this ain't happening. Uh, and that one series is just going to be stolen. That's an interesting point, and I'm actually questioning myself because I usually go with goaltending, and Oilers have not been known for goaltending, but I just really like the way they were playing around Koskinen at the end of the year, and you just dry saddled McDavid. God, I just can't get those two out of my freaking no, head. Next it's, just a weapon. Oh. it's just a weapon that nobody else has. Like, not even Pittsburgh anymore with Crosby and no. Malkin. No, the next uh, Crosby have that, have that yeah. we- weapon. So, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Edmonton, Philadelphia, and I'd be very happy if that happens. Uh, we may change our minds in future episodes. Um, one thing I will mention, and we can maybe talk about this next time. You, you were talking about a team that had a goaltender that could take I'd like just go off and go like price or something. I think Shesterkin with the Rangers could possibly do that, but uh, we'll get into all that kind of frolic next time. Uh, thank you very much for coming and talking about this great uh, deli. Uh, you've been amazing. I just, I love Appreciate your uh, insight and uh, you can come, we're going to do this hopefully mm-hmm. lots uh, Joe Boric or you guys, if you have anything else you want to tell, tell everybody your Twitter handles and all that so they can, uh, be able to be in constant contact with your 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 um, stuff that you're doing. Absolutely, uh, I'm Delhi Tweets at D E L L I T W E E T S on Twitter. Uh, that's where you can hit me up for where I'll post my articles. And I'm actually starting. I uh, should have mentioned this earlier. Starting to be like a rotating co-host for the Totally Offsides podcast. With uh, it's an Anaheim Ducks focused podcast. Uh, 
uh, hosted by a number of people in the future, including me. So that's uh, that's where you can see me soon. Sweet. That's I awesome. didn't even know that. I just yeah, I forgot that. until just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe, you? Um, yeah, uh, mine is at JJ Borek 26 on Twitter, which is B-O-R-E-K for my last name. And then uh, true underscore Philly Sport is our podcast on Twitter, spelled out true Philadelphian sportscast everywhere else. And like I told you at the beginning, Flyers, Nitty Gritty, Pub Sports Radio. And Anthony uh, Deli, it's been a pleasure being on with you. I love your stuff. I read your stuff. That Dosto article for people that haven't checked it out was awesome that he put up on his Twitter. So check that out. Um, it's been a pleasure being on with you guys. I love doing this again. Absolutely. Same goes to you, Joe. A big fan of your work is very well. And thank you, Pearl, for having us once again. All right. Thanks. Appreciate thank it, man. And you can subscribe and hit the bell and see me here all the time. I'm also uh, with Joe Bork and his podcast quite regularly. And go over to BPAL Picks and make yourself some money. Because uh, that's what we do over there at BPAL Picks. We make lots of money. Thanks for coming in, everybody that uh, is listening right now. And uh, hit the subscribe bell. Have a great day. Lots of love to ya. Yeah.